Hello. We're going to be talking about Euler's formula, um, the things that came from it, and how we can actually use that to get Fourier coefficients um, very simply from really complex uh, integrals. So basically where we're going to start is Euler's formula, and it is Euler's, it is not Euler's, it is not, not Euler's. Um, basically it is says e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. We get that from deriving, um, not deriving, from writing out e to the i theta in the series expanded form. Basically what we're going to get is we're going to get a bunch of terms without i, and we're going to get a bunch of terms with i. All the terms without i, when you group them together, they look like the series expansion for cosine of theta, so we're going to turn that into cosine theta. We're going to take all the i's out of the ones that do have it, and we're going to put the i on the outside here. And then we're going to note that all of the ones that do not have an i anymore um, look like the series expansion for sine theta. So that's how we get e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Euler also has these things that we can get from his formula, and that is sine of x, which is my dummy variable, is equal to e to the i x minus e to the minus i x. We're going to get cosine x, which is e to the i x plus e to the minus i x all over 2. And these are the complex definitions for sine and cosine. Fourier coefficients are um, something that we're going to have to find um, when we um, write out a Fourier transform. Um, so we have a sub naught is equal to 1 over L integral negative L, L, fx dx. The same thing for a sub n, uh, but it's going to be cosine nx times that. And b sub n is the same thing, but we're going to have sine of nx times that. And so the function that I've chosen to look for the Fourier coefficients for is f of x is equal to the integral, or sorry, piecewise. Um, from 1 from negative pi to 0, and 0 from 0 to pi. A sub naught is really simple. We just do the integral um, from 1 over pi um, to, from negative pi to 0 because that is the only place where the function is actually uh, able to be integrated from. Um, so we do negative pi to 0 dx, and we're going to get 1 for a sub naught. A sub n, we're going to have 1 over pi integral negative pi to 0 again, only because that's where the function is. So the function would be here, it would be a 1 times cosine nx dx. And we're actually going to write out cosine nx dx in its complex form. So it's going to be e to the i nx plus minus i nx all over 2 dx. And so when we do this integration process, we can actually be really clever here. And we can um, do the integrals of each of these respectively. Um, and then when we have this 1 over 2 pi on the outside, we actually put 2 on the inside and put n on the outside, so we swap 2 in the end, so we can actually manipulate the uh, integral to look the way we want it. And when we do that, we're actually going to note that this is, right here, sine of nx. We started with cosine of nx, we did the integral, and now we get sine of nx. That is exactly what we expect um, if we did the integral normally, um, the way sane people do, um, when it's a simple integral, of course. Um, so what we're going to find that when we actually do the um, sine of nx from the bounds of negative pi to 0, when we put that number in, we're actually going to see that a sub n is actually equal to 0. And we're going to do a very similar process for sine of nx. And when you go through it, we're going to cleverly find that, of course, the integral of sine of nx is bum -ba -bum, cosine of nx um, times some other stuff. And so we're actually have 1 over a uh, minus 1 over n pi times cosine of nx from negative pi to 0, and that's the what happens when we do the integral out. Now we're going to find that b sub n is actually both 0 and minus 2 over n pi, depending on uh, whether or not n is even or odd. Um, and of course, your n here on the bottom is actually going to depend on what the actual n is. But as long as n is odd, it's going to look like this. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to put that into these, um, this, which is f of x equal to 1 half, uh, a sub naught plus the series of cosine of n pi x over l a sub n, and the same thing but with sine and b sub n. And so what we're going to do is going to put our a sub n value, which was zero, a sub naught zero, which is a sub naught value, which is one, and b sub naught value, which is both zero and minus two over n pi. Uh, kind of hard to do here, but you would put these into there, and that would be your Fourier transform um, function with the Fourier coefficients um, already put in there. Yeah. So basically the whole point of, of this exercise was to show you that, you know, we can actually use the complex definitions here um, to do what would hopefully be a really nasty integral, in which case you would really want to put um, cosine and sine into the complex definitions because 
what happens a lot of the time is that the the e the exponentials are actually going to cancel out with one another and you're going to end up with a really simple integral that's a lot easier to solve rather than having to deal with sines and cosines and having to use an integration table and and have to do all kinds of different different tricks that are completely unnecessary um, when you can just do um, this simple change here that's going to make your life like way easier because now you can take this two on the outside and you can do all these nice little exponentials because they are probably one of the easiest things to uh, integrate at least i think so it can get kind of hairy uh, when you have things times each other but talking too much wrote on the wall earlier sorry basically that's what we did today i hope this showed you something that you didn't do before and that you probably will do in the future when you have to do a really complex Fourier coefficient calculation using some nasty, nasty integrals. We can use this beautiful little relation to make our life easy. Thank you so much for your time. All this information came from both Professor Smallwood's notes um, and the Boaz book, which we use in Physics 130 at San Jose State University. Um, all this information can be found there. Um, this was specifically Chapter 7, Section 5, and this is Problem 1 from Chapter 7, Section 5. Um, thank you again for your time. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I hope that this was sufficient enough for your learning today. Thank you.